We're here with head coach Rochelle Turner after the Racers' uh, first victory of the season, uh, the first game of the season, 104 to 60 over SIUE. Uh, we will open it up at this time. You're probably not sure what to think of an easy win over SIUE. <laughs> I tell you, I even looked in the record books and I think over time it was like 14 and 13. Uh, they've never been an easy out. Uh, they're well coached. They play hard. They're de dealing with some injuries right now. They'll be a different team in a month or so when when they get everybody back. K.K. Rodriguez is one of the best players in the OVC, and she's not quite back yet. But uh, the, they'll be – I will not want to face them uh, come uh, first of the year when OVC play gets here because they've got some shooters, they've got some inside presence, but they really miss their guards that are out. Are you happy with the uh, tempo tonight? I thought the tempo was really good at times, and then at times we got a little – when they went in zone, sometimes we got a little bit stagnant. Or sometimes we tend to walk the ball up the floor a little bit more when we see zone. But the execution against the zone was really good. And then, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a fine line between sportsmanship and how we play. And I have a lot of respect for Sam, and I have a lot of respect for SIU's program, but we press for 40 minutes. But when you look up and the score is what it is and those type of things, as soon as we take that off, we're not the same team. We don't play as hard in the half court. We don't get after you. It's just a different mindset. So uh, I thought that the pace slowed down a whole lot uh, in the fourth quarter. But I thought our kids came in and did a good job of finishing it off. Well, let's talk about the third quarter. That, that was the quarter that really gave you all some trouble last year. Uh, 31 points. That's Pretty good, I think. Yeah, we're not talking about the third quarter, John. We have decided we're not going to mention it this year because this is a new team and a new year. No, uh, no, you're right. I mean, it was an Achilles here last year. We tried doing we tried doing different things in the locker room before we came out. We tried different warm ups after halftime, but you know, I just think it's the maturity of our basketball team. We've got some great returners that really are leading this basketball team. It was what we talked about before the game. We need some contagious leadership, and we need the younger and the newcomers to follow. And I thought tonight we had that. And the way our kids uh, just went out and kind of set the tone from the jump allowed us to do that in the third quarter as well. Were there, was there anything that encouraged you the most just about the way that your team played today? Uh, especially compared from, you know, Bethel to now. I like making shots. Uh, you know, we, we heard our percentage there in one possession. I think we missed like five, but, but overall, uh, the kids came out and they made shots and that's going to be a difference maker. Uh, you got to pick your poison against us. You got to guard us on the inside or you got to try to guard us on the outside. And when Kate comes out and makes five of six, Haven, you know, makes one to start off the game. And then sporadically, we, uh, we made some, we didn't make nearly as many as I'd like to. I mean, when we get open shots, I feel like our kids should make one of every two and maybe that's high standard, but that's my standard. So we've still got some work to do. But I think as some of these younger players get more, you know, level off a little bit, they're still nervous, they're still trying to figure things out, things haven't slowed down for them. When that starts to happen and those those shots start falling, uh, then, you know, that's going to be huge. But if Trinity, Briley, uh, Haven, Hallie and them can make two or three a night, that's really going to change the game for us. Y'all had some issues in the first half, uh, not converting all their turnovers. Uh, probably didn't, didn't score as much as y'all wanted to, but one thing that was constant was assists leading the baskets. You ended up with 28 assists on 38 baskets. You got to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, it's a way over me basketball team. You know, uh, you know, one particular play, uh, we were running uh, one of our plays, and Kate took it off the dribble. And, and, and Daz did exactly what she's supposed to do. She ghosted to the other side. Kate got the two feet, dumped it down there. You know, our post players are making good passes as well. Ava led the break at one point uh, tonight. So it's a good passing team, very unselfish team. I really believe they don't care who gets the credit as long as we can win games. And, and that, that shows when you have that many assists per basket. Uh, I thought our job on the offensive glass at times was really good. We just got to do a better job converting those. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't on the stat sheet that show up. You know, Daz at the top of our press. She just creates all kinds of havoc. She keeps balls alive. Uh, our guards, our two-point guards rebounded like crazy tonight. You know, when Haven and Hallie have what, I don't know for sure, 13 maybe together. Uh, and that's just kids wanting to do what we ask them to do and get in there and fighting for us. So we have a lot of, we have a lot of kids that have really bought into what we're trying to do. They play hard for each other. And the best thing about tonight was we had that contagious leadership that we need. How good was it to see Briley get some shots to go down. I knew she would. She put in a lot of time uh, since the Bethel game. We worked on some footwork. Uh, 
very coachable, uh, and I knew I knew she'd make some shots. We just got to continue to uh, to keep uh, to keep her uh, positive because you know she's a big key for us, especially from the three point line. But you know that's another kid that's just doing so much that people don't notice. She's on the floor. She's playing defense. She communicates. Uh, you know she makes good passes. She makes the extra pass. Uh, you know just really doing things that that don't necessarily show up, but they're definitely things that coaches notice. You had a lot of different players, you know, with relatively even minutes. Uh, what did you see from, you know, those players getting into the game in the later, later stages? Yeah, I mean, you know, they work hard too. They they ran all the sprints all summer. You know, they they get up and uh, and do seven a.m. weights and all that. So it's great to see them come in. But when they come in and they're successful, that's even better. I mean, we got in a situation at the end of last year where one of our posts was out with a concussion. We had some kids, you know, not go to postseason for for different reasons. And those kids got to be ready. I mean, you never know when your number's going to be called. A perfect example is Destiny. Destiny played at the end of last year when one of our players had a concussion. But that's where she earned my respect, and that's where she earned her teammates' respect, and all she's done is grown and gotten better from that point. So that's an, an example. I tell them in the huddle, this is your chance. This is your chance to either prove me wrong because you're not playing enough or to prove me right that you're not playing because you can't get it done. I mean, that's that's blunt, but that's facts in those type of games. But, you know, with our kids like Ava and Caitlin putting up a double-double in just a little over half a game, I mean, you know, that says a lot for them. But instead of being upset that they're not playing in the fourth quarter to get their averages up, they're the big, biggest cheerleaders on the bench. And, again, that's what I love about these kids. I love coming to work every day because I love being around them. Uh, winning helps, obviously. Uh, but, you know, our, sch- our schedule gets tougher from the jump starting Tuesday. So we just got to continue to pre- prepare, prepare and be ready to perform when it matters. Let us know something about those assists again. Eight different players had assists. It wasn't just one person getting the majority of them. Yeah, just, I mean, very unselfish. I mean, selflessness is one of our core words in our culture, and these kids have really bought into that. You want to talk about Tuesday a little bit? Sure. Uh, most coaches schedule non-D1 opponents on Kids Day because it's at 11, you know, pregames at 7 a.m., uh, games at 11, and you really just don't want to have to worry about things as much. You know, I mean, not that non-D1 opponents can't come in and beat you, but usually you schedule – Someone that you feel like that you have the upper hand on. Well, I scheduled the OVC champions from last year. So, but and I mean, that's on purpose. I mean, everything that we do from here on out is going to be tough. Everything we do is going to be to challenge our kids. They have everybody back. Uh, their coach is one of the best coaches uh, uh, in the NCAA. He's been coaching forever, and he does an outstanding job with their personnel. It's going to be a test, and it's going to be something that our kids are going to have to be ready mentally and physically to play because it's not going to be easy. It's going to be different. Hopefully it'll be a great atmosphere. You know, love those screaming kids here and our community really, really uh, supports our, our education days, but uh, it's not something that we can take for granted.